And now it's time for a very special event. This is called the Quartet Showcase. And you are about to watch quartet performances from the past. These are all championship quartets, and it has been such a blast putting these together for you. Oh my goodness, Karen, I don't even know where to begin. There are so many to choose from. Today is just a small example of what we could have been airing for this wonderful <laughs> showcase. We want to thank, though, the uh, International Board of Directors and the Education Direction Committee because their input and guidance in choosing these performances is more than appreciated. So thanks to all those fine ladies as well. I can't wait for us to get rolling. Right. Yesterday you saw performances and interviews with the current champions, but now we're going to travel back through time and see some of these other great performances. I know some of you were there and you'll remember these, but for some of you, you might be seeing and, and listening to these quartets for the first time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I'm so excited with how we are starting today because this first quartet is near and dear to my heart. This is the 2015 international champions. They won in 2014 and they are Davey, Angie, Dee Dee, and Kim. They happen to all be members of my chorus, Spirit of the Gulf, so we adore them. And Dee Dee is co-director and really the one that's holding down the fort for all of us right now. Just love these gals, and I know you're going to. This is from their finals package when they won, and you will notice how regal they look while singing. Here they are, bling. My sweet darling dear, come over here, cause you're the one and only Quartet. And some interesting things about them, actually. They started in the summer of 2009. They won their first regional in 2010 with the second highest score ever at a regional contest. I was, I remember, I was on the panel. And then uh, Davy and Dee Dee had never competed at the international level. So that made them a qualifier, actually, for a Novice Quartet Award. And so in Seattle, for the first time ever, a Novice Quartet Award was offered. 
and they got it and they came in eighth. So they made the top 10 in Seattle in 2010 as well. So, I mean, I, what an exciting year and a half it was for them. Then they went on to Baltimore five years later in 2014 and won that contest. So obviously they worked very hard and they really, really, um, it paid off for them. They are, as you said, Karen, they're all members of your chorus, which is a wonderful thing to have a quartet of the caliber near and dear to each other and to you. One of the things they said that I thought was so interesting, and I quote, we're just four regular people who ended up at the right time in the right place. Well, I'd like to be that regular and sing that well. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, I would like for you to expand a little on that, uh, that arrangement, which was a great arrangement of an old time classic song. They make it look so easy, but what would be difficult about that? Well, so many things, but you're right, they make it look easy. I think a lot of us think of the speed that they get to. It's, it's a very fast tempo and it's so perfectly in sync. But I think one thing that impresses me even more than the fast part is the slow part. And that buildup, which takes a lot of um, discipline to not rush too fast. So they came out and they did that great intro and their hearts must have been pounding, you know, with adrenaline. But did you notice the poise with which they settled in to that slow, sexy tempo? I'm very impressed with that. Well, and you know what, they make, anytime that you really know you're watching and listening to great singers, there's a sense of ease about what they do. They make it look easy, it feels easy, and that relaxes the audience, which from a scoring standpoint is huge because the audience rapport is a big deal in the showmanship category for sure. So what a wonderful performance. And speaking of wonderful performances, we are moving on to a quartet that the entire organization embraced the second they saw them, but we're going to hear from the love notes, Brittany, Mia, Caitlin, and Stephanie. And they are actually going to do a sequel to their previous year's finals package, which, which refers to online coaching. And, and they do a lot of rehearsing that way because they live in, two of them in Northern Carolina, uh, Northern California, and two of them in Southern California. Now, California is a big state. If you live in Rhode Island, this is kind of hard to understand, <laughs> I'll bet. But they're a distance quartet because that they, even though they're in the same state, they are quite uh, many miles apart, let's put it that way. So they rehearse a lot online. And it's interesting because they had a coaching session one night and we all know how this goes. We've all been Zooming and everything that when something doesn't go right, none of it goes right. The microphones weren't working, the, the video wasn't working, there was lag in the picture and all these things. And they, they looked at each other and it's like they thought of this at the same time, we need to do something with this. So they created um, a song using, uh, um, what was it, Hooked on a Feeling, they said. Yeah. And they created a song for their final set. And uh, this is what we're going to watch right now. I think you'll all enjoy it. Great touches of humor, great quartet, take it away, love notes. So last year, we talked a little bit about how, as a long-distance quartet, we have used video chatting on the internet with Skype in order to coach each other and rehearse in pairs. Well, since then, we've heard from a lot of sweet adlines who've told us that they've used Skype, too, to rehearse and even to work with coaches. After another year of Skyping misadventures together, we thought we would expand on the topic and let you learn from our trial and error. Video chatting technology is growing and changing every day. Now, you don't even need a computer to video chat. You can use your tablet or iPhone. And when we heard about the Skype group video chat feature, we thought maybe we could use it to take care of some business from four different locations. But it looked a little something like this. Hi, guys! Hey guys. How are you? <laughs> okay, let's get down to business. All okay. right. So well, first, I, I just thought that, that we might want to start we, with... Oh, oh sorry. sorry. You, you go, go ahead, ahead Britt. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, so, maybe um, we could I was start say with... Maybe we could... Um, oh, sorry. Why don't you just let Britt talk, talk first? Okay. okay. Well, so maybe I we could just... Say, no. we were gonna... Sorry. sorry. It's just I can't I hear anything. I can't hear anything. I'm talking over you. And it's happening. Hear me? 
surprisingly, that wasn't the least productive conversation we've had in 11 years of singing together. Now, if your internet is really slow and glitchy, you can also try using the data connection to video chat on your phone. Hey! hey. Can you guys turn the screen, please? Oh, okay, uh, and get a little closer. Closer? Not that close. But we wouldn't recommend it. Well, I think the only advice that we really have for all of you potential Skype rehearsers out there is to stick with what works. I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. Skype, you just don't realize what you do to me. When we're Skyping, and the chords aren't tight, they let me know something isn't right. Ah, 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 ah. Can't stop Skype from freezing. It looks like, like we're sneezing. <laughs> In four part harmony. that would be for today. It's Cortez are experiencing that same thing. Everyone worldwide is experiencing it. It's almost a, like a prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> they did such a great job with it and the timing on their comedic reactions to each other and everything it was fantastic. You know, their MC setup was so natural. When you watch entertainment packages that really work, you notice how authentic people are at the microphone. Uh, it was just such a natural flow. And then the creativity of that, the screen going black and all of the freeze poses and, and how they waited out the audience applause. Um, those are professional showmanship gals right there. Absolutely. And you know, here's an example of a quartet that first won a rising star competition. They won Rising Star in um, 2005, uh, and their name at that point was Underage. Yes. So obviously they had to uh, change that name, but they're still very, very young and gorgeous, of course. So it's so fun to think of Rising Star champions that are now uh, <laughs> Queens of Harmony. What a great beginning and what a great future. Just, and the organization just loves these four gals and they, they do such a great job in serving and helping as all of our champions do. So every time we have an event, we need, we need them to be present. If they can do it at all for us, they help us, all of our champions do. So we thank Love Notes for the inspiration they've given 
to all of the younger people in our organization who say, yeah, I can do this. Good for yeah. them. They've been busy traveling the world and doing a lot of shows in schools. So um, they're still at it and yeah. we love them. Thank you, Love Notes. It's interesting that we just listened to a quartet of champions that were first rising star champions because we're gonna now hear some other rising star champions. This quartet won at, in 2017 at the IES actually in Baltimore. I know I was there and it was fantastic. Actually, I think I've been to every rising star contest since they began. And uh, what a beginning <laughs> and <laughs> how great these are now to watch. Um, so we are about to hear Adrenaline. And I know you'll enjoy Maggie, Amanda, Jaden, and Kesney, Adrenaline. You can fool some people all of the time, and they never do get wise. Admit you fooled me some of the time. Playing with my heart, you overplayed your part. I must have been dumb, dumb as they come to believe you from the start. Gonna get luck to you and to the other. I mean the one you kept undercover. Take a good, a good look in the good, a good book. There's a good, a good reason why. It's goodbye, bye bye, good, a good bye, bye bye, good, a good luck. To you and to the other, I mean the one you kept undercover. Take a good, a good look in the good, a good book. There's a good, a good reason why. It's goodbye, bye, 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 good, a good, bye, bye, baby, so long. Goodbye, good, a good, bye, good, a good, bye. Bye, 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 bye. goodness they had so much attitude and characterization in that song and you know we asked them if there were any special things about the the choosing this song and learning this song and they did tell us that some of them were going through some breakups in their life and this song kind of hit home so maybe maybe <laughs> that explains how they could put so much energy and character into that song that was so much fun fantastic yeah, that's, that performance actually happened at an IES, and uh, sometimes the Rising Star competition happens there. For 2021, uh, this is a shameless plug for Queens College, because the Rising Star competition for 2021 happens during our Queens College, and that's in Dallas, July 15th through 17th. Uh, there's all kinds of information out there about it. We'd love to see all of you at Queens College for 2021. That would be awesome. And what's next, Karen? Okay, now we have Queens of Harmony from 2018. That means they actually competed in 2017 at Vegas 3. For those of you that don't know what that means, we had three internationals in Las Vegas in a row. So those of us that did them all, refer to them as Vegas 1, 2, and 3. So Luster 1, Vegas 3. But this is a quartet that has hung in there for a lot of years. They actually started in 2005 and then won the International in 2017. The, I know we have a, an extraordinary medalist quartet right now called Tenacious, <laughs> uh, but this quartet also shows such tenacity in hanging in there. And we'll tell you a little bit more about them after you hear this 
great song. Uh, when they did this ballad and they did it for many years competing, um, every time it just made my heart go pity pat. <laughs> so we hope you'll enjoy What Kind of Fool Am I? From Luster, here's Kate, Lori, Lori, and Jenny. more to give. Alone in my life, this is no way to live, for I'm hiding the truth behind a mask. In the midst of my wandering, Oh my gosh, how emotional a presentation of that beautiful song. That mm -hmm. was amazing. And you know, they talked about this afterwards that rumor had it that some of the judges were actually cheery. And I, there's no doubt, I'm sure they were because, you know, we, we're as, yes, we sit there as judges, but we're as just as moved by a performance as anyone in the audience. And so I'll bet that did take place. I'm so happy for them to have sung that so well. I'll bet they walked off stage 10 feet off the ground on that, Karen. I hope they did. And we talked before about not tossing out a, a song too quickly. They competed with that song six times and it just kept getting better and better. And, and yet look at that performance and it looked totally fresh. Uh, and there's a trick to that too, to not looking bored with a song, even though you've done it before. Hey, let's talk about their choruses just a little bit because I'm sure they're watching right now. They all belong to Harbor City Music Company 
and they are vital. They don't just belong, but they are section leaders and leaders and administrative leaders and um, active and involved. And that's just a wonderful thing. But also Kate uh, is a member of the Capital Accord Chorus and Jenny directs the Arundel Air Chorus. So I know all those choruses are so proud of them. Oh my goodness. And you, you, another thing that they do that is so wonderful, they have, since November of 2019, they've been donating 20% of their CD sales to, to Sweet Adeline's Life on a High Note campaign. So uh, just saying, uh, you know, that's a wonderful thing. And I'm sure they sell lots of CDs. So we all benefit from that as well. Yeah. So please uh, consider that uh, donating to the uh, campaign because if they can do it, we can do it. Yeah. And, you know, I want you to picture this. The year that they won, um, their chorus, Harbor City Music Company, made the chorus finals. Oh. So that happens on Saturday, as you know. And Harbor City Music Company was... Uh, they drew number 10 in the contest. So what happened was Luster had front row seats because they had just won the day before. So they're there cheering on every chorus competitor up at least through intermission. Then they had to run backstage, take their crowns off, get on chorus com costumes, come on stage with Harbor City Music Company, quickly run off stage, get back in their crowns, because then they did their set as the newly crowned queens. That had to have been exhilarating, but exhausting. If you can even picture that, wow. Well, that's a marathon, but that's also, talk about dedication and commitment. And they are chorus leaders as well. And for all of those great singers out there, if there's any place you are needed, is that your chorus? Because what you are learning as quartet singers is top-notch coaching. And to bring that into your course environment is just something we as directors certainly appreciate a lot. So yes. thank you for doing that. <laughs> we have an incredible quartet coming up. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before, Karen. But when, when they got together, there was quite a buzz going on in this organization. <laughs> and so we are we're going to enjoy a performance by a quartet that Karen Breitard is a part of, actually, The Buzz. And they are our 2005 international champs. And they're going to perform that very famous No, No, Norman that I know you have done a million times. People ask for it all the time. You sang this at your very first international contest with this quartet on the stage in Indianapolis in 2004. And you won right off the bat. So I'm not going to say a whole lot more about it because I think after you finish singing here, you'll have a lot more background to give us than I can. So take it away, Buzz. In the apartment above me, oh, there is the funniest boy. But I don't know, I don't know what he has to be jealous of. She has a she just a mother could love and, and still I know he's always worried Some guy will steal his prize away, away. He's always asking is there somebody else yeah, right. I guess it's just to hear her say No, no, Norman, nobody but you, dear You know, Norman, yours truly is true, dear when you accuse me of, oh, but then, baby, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I love you so, oh, 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 I have chances too many to mention, never give them a bit of attention, and would I trade you for Tom Cruise, oh, no, 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 Norman, no, 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 no. Speaking of cheating, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I love you so. I see eyes that are full of affection, but I always as a kick in another direction. And would I trade you for Barbara Shaw? Barbara Shaw! Bye-bye, Norman, so long forever. Sayonara, Riva, the 
Archie. Later, alligator, us down to beat some bye bye. Oh my goodness, a championship <laughs> performance. There's no doubt about uh, that. Thank but, you. You know, there you the the buzz is comprised of four queens. And so uh no surprise that you sing well, but that doesn't always mean it's gonna work though, right? That's right. There's a lot more to it. But um tenor Nancy sang in the nineteen ninety-two champion quartet City Lights, and she and so did Jeannie for Lick the Bass, and Debbie Cleveland the lead was a champion with Showtime in 1994 and you, Karen, in 1985 with Jubilation and you also direct the Spirit of the Golf Course right now. You represented uh, Region 9 and 15 in that contest, if, I, if I'm correct. That's right. And, and I, you know, everybody can see that you are such close <laughs> friends. You never changed personnel and you were actually together for 16 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like but just, just watching that makes me so lonesome. We have Zoomed together during this pandemic, but um, we miss each other so much. It was an amazing ride. And um, that was just one of the fun songs we sang probably all 16 years. And Di, you're so right when you said that just because you've won before doesn't mean when queens get together to sing that it's going to uh, not have work to be done. So it's fun work. Uh, but yeah, don't, don't assume that, wow, they're, they're going to be good automatically because they won before. Oh, no. I don't know what that feels like. I've never um, competed on the international stage in a quartet. With choruses, yes, but not quartetting. And I... I know that tons of work goes into that. And it's a melding of personalities as well. And you were a distance quartet to some yes. degree, right? So how does that, I want, before we go any further, how does that work for distance quartets? What do you need to do to make that work? Yeah, when we started, we were in four different states, uh, but the same time zone, because we have other quartets now that are even in different time zones. Um, it can work, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. It takes responsibility and accountability and doing your homework. None of us would ever dream of coming to a rehearsal unprepared. And that's not just because we had to spend money to get together. Uh, that's just because we respected and loved each other. So even if you live next door to somebody, um, quartet members really, and chorus members too, really need to do their homework and be prepared for the next rehearsal. Well, great advice. Great advice. It works for choruses too, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next, Karen? Let's see. We are going to go to a winning quartet from 2015, which was Vegas 1. I already explained what that means. Uh, this is Speed of Sound. Speed of Sound started in 2012, and they got 12th place. And then the next year, they moved up to 9th and then they move to second, and from second to first place. And they're known for a lot of things, but I have a feeling the song you're about to see is maybe what they are most known for, because their baritone Carter is quite the comedian, and this song, she gets to show that aspect of her talent. So this is Debbie, Ashley, Carter, and Peggy, your 2016 champs, Speed of Sound. Thank you so much, Baltimore. We are speed of sound. We're speed, speed of sound. Oh, home. Look, You're... everybody. It's Carter. I know. You're doing a great job, no. Debbie. Gee, thanks. <clears throat> what can I help you with today, Carter? Uh, I just want to tell him a little something before about... we go. Oh, about my new boyfriend. Oh, oh, for heaven's sakes, Carter, they do not want to hear about your boyfriend. Oh, yes, they do want to hear about my boyfriend. <laughs> He's really cute. He's great career. He has a great uniform oh, okay. for his new oh, career. Oh, shuddy, shuddy, shuddy. Okay, if we let you talk about your boyfriend, then can we get on with the show? <sighs> Yes. Well, make it snappy. Okay, I'll just tell you really quick. He's so talk, cute. Talk, I'm telling him, you, he's really him, adorable. And he has yeah, a great, yeah. great, great you know. stop. 
There's a boy who works at Starbucks who is very inspirational. He is very inspirational because of many things. I come in at 811 and he smiles and says, how are you? When he smiles and says, how are you? I could swear my heart grows wings. So today at 811, I decided I should meet him. I decided I should meet him in a proper, formal way. So today at 811, when he smiled and said, how are you? I said, fine, and my name's Carter. And he softly answered, hey. And I said, my name is Carter. And he said his name was Taylor, which provides the inspiration for this song. She's in love, you see, Taylor, the latte boy. He brings me Java, brings me joy. Oh, Taylor, the latte boy. I love him, I love him, I love him. I saw him flip the lever to prepare my double latte, but for me he made it triple, and he didn't think I knew. But I saw him flip that lever, and for me he made it triple, and I knew that triple latte meant that Taylor loved me too. I said, I'm so pleased to meet you. said, keep the 355 because this triple latte was on him. Oh my God. She's in love, you see. Taylor, Taylor the latte boy. He brings me Java, brings me joy. Oh, Taylor, the latte boy. I love him, I love him, I love him. She loves him. So many years my heart has waited. Who'd have thought that love could be so caffeinated? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> 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 My goodness, <laughs> that Carter, I'm she's a comedian singer, hysterical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to meet that latte boy. <laughs> you know, actually, everybody was asking them where that song came from. And um, I heard it first by Kristen Chenoweth. And yet I looked up the authors, the composers of that song are Marcy Heisler and Zena Goldrick. And they said they actually based that song on their favorite barista from a Starbucks. So it was, it was kind of based on personal experience, but oh my goodness, I can never get enough of watching Carter perform, all of them. Uh, but Carter with that face and her, her actions, she is a hoot. Well, that was, that was hysterical. And, and it's one of those things where she could have done it alone, but the backup singers and their yes. reaction to her really was the frosting on the cake. That was, you could hear the audience. The reaction was hysterically, hysterical from the audience. They're laughing along. I don't know how she does it and keeps a straight face like that. I would crack up. I would just sit down and find myself so funny. I would just quit. <laughs> and in this convention, they also did, well, so many uh, gorgeous songs. I remember them doing He Touched Me. And, you know, oh. here's Carter being old. 
curious. And all of them just delivered that song so powerfully. And then you get to see this side of them. So what fun. That was a treat to watch again. Well, and they know who they are and they know what personalities to use for what they need to do. I, I, that was awesome. They are, they too are a long distance quartet. Um, when they won their regional, they represented region 14 at that time. And so that's kind of a neat thing to know, but I know they travel all over as well. And um, we're going to move on right now to ambiance because I don't even know where to start with these people. <laughs> this is, ambiance was the 19... 87 International Champion Quartet. They won in Philadelphia in 1986, and I'll never forget this. A little story about myself on this one, because I was up in the balcony of that auditorium, and I think I had just purchased a light beer or something. It was one of those places where you could buy a drink and take it in with you, and I, this was my first international up close and sitting and watching like that, all of it, and, and I, I could not believe it. They, I, I said, who are these people? Because I didn't know the quartets that well and they were new. I mean, they got together, they won regional and went straight to international several months later and they just won. And so these four women, Shelly Sweet, she was Shelly Sweet at the time, Rubinick now is her last name, Liz Hardcastle, Sandy Wright and Diane Huber, well known in the organization and they sing the song Handful of Keys, about that old stride piano. This is not from the international stage, this performance, but, but we're gonna show it to you anyway because everywhere they go, they've done this song. It's a high request and it's absolutely spectacular. They are, this, to me, the Sweet Adeline uh, Manhattan Transfer type of vocal experts here. So take it away, ambiance. So we'd like to kind of take you down into Harlem and introduce you to stride piano. That's when the right hand plays all sorts of funky little melodies down here and the left hand plays alternate chords. Right. <laughs> Meet your bums at the end. Yeah. 
Wow ambiance. Uh, not an easy arrangement. Ooh. And uh, that was actually not on an international stage, what you just saw. That was from a River Blender show. And Diane Huber is the director of River Blender's Chorus. And so uh, that goes back a few years. Wow, we all just admire that um, expertise and ability so much. Oh, such a unique quartet, unique sound, unique delivery. And uh, Liz Hardcastle is one of the funniest MC people we've ever had in the organization. And so she could, she would sometimes say, yeah, she didn't know what was going to come out of her mouth next, but people were laughing all the time and did great segues for, from song to song in all of their performances. Yeah, and they told us that they didn't really plan choreography. I mean, look how loose and free they are, but things would just happen and evolve, including like Shelly screaming like she does there. That wasn't planned, uh, but then it, it'd be funny and they would keep it. So that's the way a lot of authentic uh, staging happens. It just kind of happens and then you know that it works. Well, and you know that there's a sense of spontaneity that the audience picks up on. And there's a, that's a great way to get rapport is to be comfortable enough, obviously, to be spontaneous and, and be able to pull it off. They said sometimes they could just wink or head, nod, uh, nod their heads or something and they each knew what the other was thinking. And, um, you know, I've talked to Diane in the past and she said there was something always magical for them when they got on stage. Diff much different than their rehearsals, actually. She said, when we sang on stage, as soon as we got on stage, something else happened. It just took over and it was, it was magical. And they had just a wonderful time performing and they were everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they, they traveled and, and sang together for nine years and I'm sure did that song many times. Uh, you know, David Wright arranged that song, Sandy's Husband, and we all know and love David Wright. Um, he arranged most of Ambiance's music. And they said to us in, the, in their answers to our questionnaire that sometimes when David was listening to them and coaching them, he would patiently say something like, I'd like you to sing all the notes that I wrote. <laughs> and I can just picture David saying that and just suggesting that they stay in a key and sing the notes he wrote. I think that's hysterical. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, as we're moving on, um, this is a good time to explain the difference about the year you won and then the year championship they call you. For example, Ambiance won in 1986, and they were still at that point called the 1986 Queens of Harmony. That all changed when this next quartet won. There actually is, for the record book, no Queens of Harmony for 1993 because that changed with Showtime. They won in 1993, but they're called the 1994 Queens of Harmony. It really makes sense because yes. you could have won late in a year and two months later you could go to do a show and they introduce you as last year's champions. And you're really just beginning your reign, but it sounds like your has-beens already. So that got changed uh, right when this next quartet won. So this is showtime. I think going from ambiance to showtime, we are going through some of our organization's favorite and oh. busy quartets. Showtime traveled and performed and taught in so many places. They were known for their creativity and their, their wild ideas along with crate singing. So you are about to enjoy Gina, Debbie, Cindy, and Dana. And this is your 1994 International Champions Showtime. We are so happy to be here. Not that we didn't enjoy the contest in Salt Lake City. We had a wonderful time in the audience. But seriously, it made us appreciate what a privilege it is to be able to sing on the contest stage. It also made us think about how much work it is to do this every year. Gina, our tenor, kind of summed it all up in a very special arrangement that she did for us. We'd like to sing for you today. She did it in the form of, the, of an opera, and it's called The Barbershopper of Seville. Act one begins six weeks before contest. Six more weeks we have just six more weeks till contest time. We have to learn those notes and memorize each word so that we can sing them perfectly. Four more weeks we 
have just four, 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 four
my gosh. Talk about moving lyrics along and wow. synchronizing them with very difficult music. That was amazing. And I remember it so clearly. Yeah. To this day, I love watching it. I'm sure you do as well. That piece was arranged by Gina, and it was inspired by the King, the King Singers, who did a medley of classical songs. But I, I think to put that into a humorous form like that, I don't recall that type of thing being on the international stage before. And I, it was just so entertaining. They were, uh, when Debbie started talking about that, she said, oh, we're so happy to be here. And the reason that was funny to the audience is because the year before, they did not even make the top 20. They did a Dick Tracy package of some sort and she re they referred to it in the song, but it just didn't quite work for them. So they came back this year. This was um, 1991 finals in San Antonio and they were second place in that contest. So talk about moving up. They, they listened to what the judges had suggested and they, they fixed what they needed to fix because boy, did they put that together and put it together well. They were never afraid to uh, try things. You know, I picture their cheerleading package where they actually, they dressed as cheerleaders and they came on stage doing cartwheels. And during the tag, they built a human pyramid. I mean, come on, who does that and sings? And the reason I think we all were knocked away by this barber shopper of Seville, uh, we had never really seen anything like that before. But they were known for their creativity and their comedy. And I just want to say that Comedy is so welcomed by the audience, but to score well doing comedy, we are a singing organization and you have to sing well. I think we've all witnessed some very funny stuff, but the singing did not support it and therefore it didn't score well. And then I think we've also heard really good singing with people trying to be funny and they weren't. <laughs> and that's not easy to watch either. But Showtime had this ability to do great comedy and creativity and sing like that. Well, they knew, they knew who they were and they knew what their pluses and minuses were. If there were any minuses, I sure don't know about them. But <laughs> boy, I, I, talk a little bit about Debbie because she has a, a classical background, doesn't she? Yeah, boy, could I talk about Debbie. <laughs> no, she is classically trained and um, Every once in a while in some of her songs and even in some of the buzz arrangements, we got to show off that side of her training. And um, wow, when she lets that free, we're just all you know, so amazed. Uh, but I, it's interesting that she is also an incredible barbershop lead. So if you ever run across somebody that says, I can't sing in the barbershop style because I'm classically trained, uh, look at Debbie who can definitely go back and forth. I mean, good singing is good singing. And so while there are traits of those genres that are different, we still want to be good singers. Always. And speaking of good singers, our next performance comes from 2010, How Are Things in Glockamora from Finian's Rainbow. And the quartet performing this is our 2011 international champions, Martini. This is the first song from their semifinal set in Houston, where they won in 2010. And another distance quartet, my goodness, uh, Karina is in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada now. The, the lead is Michelle. She's in Atlanta, Georgia. Karina's a tenor. Barry is Deanne, and she lives in the Milwaukee area in Wisconsin. And Shannon is from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. They haven't seen each other since this whole COVID thing started. They haven't seen each other since December, last December. And um, they miss each other terribly. They came together as a quartet in 2003. And uh, my goodness, this is our privilege to enjoy their probably their most popular song. Everybody asks for it. How are things in Glockamora? Take it away, girls. Such a fine day, one lovely day, takes me to a place far away. I hear a bird, London dairy bird, it will maybe. 
across the sea and tell me. little brook still leaping there does it still run down to Donny Cove through Killy Banks kill Kerry and kill Dare how are things in Glockamora is that willow tree That laddie with a twinkling eye comes smiling by, and does he walk away sad and dreamy there, not to see me there? So I ask each weeping willow. And each brook along the way, and each land that comes aside to Rajaray. How are things in Glockamora this fine day? Oh, that was beautiful. That was exquisite artistry. That Gorgeous. gorgeous song from Finian's Rainbow. And you know, they told us that while they were preparing that song, Judy Posgay was one of their coaches. And she talked to them about seeing and imagining the towns that you're singing about in that song and seeing that willow tree and the hearing the sighing. And I believe they were, and, and they made me do that too. They just brought me along for that beautiful ride. Well, that's what we call transcending the footlights. I've mm. never been there, but I felt like I was there. And that's, mm. that's what they did for the whole audience. I can see why they're asked to sing this song so often. It's just a beautiful rendition. That performance was actually from the year they won. It was from their semifinals package in Houston. That was 2011. So they are the 2012 Queens of Harmony. And while coaching them, Renee Porzel said something to them about step into your crowns. And when she said that, they hadn't won crowns yet. But isn't that a beautiful depiction of singing with confidence and championship style? And they really sang as champs right there. That would really change your demeanor. We should mm. try that with more of our groups because it's sort of like getting the A at the beginning of a course and then now you earn it. I mean, that's a different mindset. Yes. And uh, well, that was, it was just great. Beautiful, beautiful job by Martini. Oh, and you know, I think it's just worth noting that Michelle, the lead, Michelle's mom is also a queen of harmony. She was the lead, Portia Little, of the Bronze Tones, who won in 1971. So we have a mother-daughter queen act going on there, uh, both championship leads. What a family. Awesome. They told us a very funny story uh, that happened right there when they were competing, that Shannon, the bass, 
had some sort of a gel that she used in her mouth before going on stage because she tended to have a dry mouth. And this was something that would help produce saliva. So Karina decided to try it. And perhaps it's not recommended that you try something new for the first time when you're headed off to stage, whether that's contest or a show. So they were in the lobby waiting to sing and all of a sudden this gel kicked in and Karina had so much spit in her mouth that she couldn't even hold that tag. She was just all full of saliva. And so in the last warm up room, she said to her other three pals, um, don't worry about me, I'm gonna be okay. She had wiped off that gel. She said, don't worry about me. And their answer was, we never worry about you. We have enough to worry about with our own singing and our own selves. And that's a wonderful thing in a quartet. You can't take the time to worry about anyone else. You trust that they are prepared and doing their best and you focus on the job you came to do. I love well, that. Uh, I, I'm sure that the saliva thing might work for Shannon, but it was not a good idea for Karina, but she handled it. That's she, a great thing. She sure did. What a wonderful quartet. And it just makes me want to say that when we're done with this pandemic and you're having shows again, hire these fabulous champions for your shows. Hire our fabulous medalists and other quartets. Let's support our sweet Adeline quartets in our upcoming shows. I know we miss having shows, but that day will come. Absolutely. And now it's our pleasure to watch an entire entertainment package. We haven't done this yet today, but this quartet was the epitome of putting together packages. They actually won the audience favorite, the most entertaining award three times. You know already that I'm talking about frenzy. So as you watch this wonderful package, just take a look at their emceeing skills and their timing and their pacing and their comedy while they're giving us this great singing. So this is from 2016, which was Vegas too. And this is when they won your 2017 international champs frenzy. I am saving lives one diva solution at a time. You may call me a hero, but I'm just a mere diva. You are so modest, Nikki. I'm a humble person. I'm actually much greater than I think I am. <laughs> Your Dear Diva advice column has helped so many people. What kind of letters do you get? Oh, many asking for advice about love and relationships and dating. And what do you tell them? Remember to always be yourself, unless you're weird. And then please, please be someone different. But mostly, I'd like to point out the benefits of dating me. First, you'd be dating me. Enough said. <laughs> Goodbye, heartache, so long, sorrow. Met a guy, oh me, oh my, what a guy. But I'm so shy. I'm yet shy. I never smiled at all the songs that were popular. Nothing but loving songs, boring songs. I always thought those songs were foolish. Now I admit I'm wrong. I was wrong. Love songs are part of my plan. Show me, show me, show me my man. I never knew I could love. Anybody, honey, like I'm loving, loving you. 
I couldn't realize what a pair of eyes and a baby smile could do. Could do. I'm saying I, I can, can sleep and I, I can, can eat. I never knew a single soul could be so sweet. I never knew I could love anybody like I'm loving. Oh my honey, like I'm loving you now. I always thought I'd prefer single blessedness. Thought that I'd like to stay free. I'd be free and honey, I never thought my time would come to marry. No wedding bells for me. Not for me. Oh, but I changed my mind after all. After all. Baby, you are, you are, you are the one that made me fall. I was all my heart a butterfly. I never knew I could love anybody. Sexy friends who love and man can do, I'm saying I, I can't can sleep and I can eat. Never knew a single soul could be so sweet. I never knew I could love anybody. Sure as there are stars above. Love is in my plan, cause he's a frenzy fan. Honey, you're the one. Dear Diva, tell us, what other kinds of letters do you get? Oh, many ask for weight loss advice, of course. But I prefer to tell women to love themselves because everyone is beautiful just the way they are. After all, style comes in all shapes and sizes. So the bigger you are, the more style you have. And if your thighs touch, you are one step closer to becoming a mermaid! I'm just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you I'd be like heaven to touch I want to hold me so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Sing along, everybody. You know you wanna. Trust in me when I say, You love me, baby. What's not to love, I say? You love me, baby, and I am here to stay. I'll let you love me, baby. I love me. You're just too good to be true, Nikki. I tell you, I am so awesome, I'm even inspiring myself. <laughs> Nikki, yes. do you think you could share some of your diva wisdom and, and help us? Uh, well, not sure there's any helping you, but I shall try. Thanks, dear diva. You see, my problem is I'm a middle-aged woman. Yes, I'm really in my prime. I'm a middle-aged babe, and I'm looking a mighty fine. Mature and sexy, healthy and fit, brave and strong, yet I can't remember. Beep. Oh, I'm irritable and crabby, and my mood is on the swing. Hey, yes it is. Woo! 
the heat comes in flashes and I forget everything. Who are you? A five o'clock shadow wasn't in my plans. And every time I sneeze, I always pee my pants. Yes, I'm middle-aged here on this stage. I'm middle-aged, completely crazed. I'm middle-aged. is to start using these <clears throat> symptoms to your advantage. Okay. I mean, if your memory is so bad, you can now plan your own surprise parties! <laughs> that is great advice, Nikki. Maybe you can help me. I am so tired. My son Ethan is two and a half now. My life is insane. I am the very model of a mommy of a toddler. I thought when you had grown a bit, my life would be much easier. My day consists of Bert and Ernie, Elmo, and the alphabet. You brush your teeth and take a bath, and somehow I am soaking wet. Pick up your toys, don't lick the cat. Now tell me where you put your pants. Spit out whatever's in your mouth. Of course, let's do a silly dance. Peanut butter's in your hair. I'll hug you when you skin your knees. I don't know how he did it, but my phone is set to Portuguese. We don't know how he did it, but her phone is set to Portuguese. We don't know how he did it, but her phone is set to Portuguese. Don't know how he did it, but her phone is set to Portuguese. Don't know how he did it, but her phone is set to Portuguese. I hope that that is healthy, dirty. Oven's hot. We do not touch. Get your hand out of my shirt. Don't kick Daddy in the crotch. You giggle when you burp and toot. I blame that on your father. I am the very model of a mommy of a toddler. Time for bed now, day is done, my wish for you, my little one. That you will be a tenor. Oh, like mommy! Not a lead or bass or baritone. ta <laughs> Melissa. As a non-parent, uh -huh. my expert advice is yeah. simple. Okay. Sleep when your baby sleeps. Scream when your baby screams. And take Benadryl when your baby takes Benadryl. <laughs> Another problem solved! Next! Nikki, I'm depressed. This quartet makes fun of how I sing. Well, we can't tell if you're making up your notes half the time. Oh. I don't think she's making up her notes. Thanks, Nikki. I think she's drunk. <laughs> Does this sound drunk to you? I never knew I could love anybody like I'm loving. Okay. Like I said. Don't encourage. Drunk. Do you see what I have to put up with? I went to my therapist, asked him what to do. He said you'll have to live your life with those baritone blues. I'm a baritone. I don't sing melody. I'm so. Cause when the rest of friends is singing. They keep telling me I sound drunk. She sounds drunk, drunk, drunk. You should kiss the ground I walk on. Not only am I superior and brilliant, I sing all the notes you don't want to. your therapist take my advice and sing the chosen part lead I see you're overcome by how wonderfully helpful I am yes dear diva has saved 
so many souls. I'm a hero. If you look inside my heart, you don't have to be afraid or look too far. I've got the answers. I'm here to save the day. And the troubles that you know will melt away. Because when your diva comes along, you can tell me what is wrong and you'll finally see the truth i'm a hero here for you listen here people i'm not just a modest diva who likes to think of other people and tell them what to do no my advice giving powers are limitless I'm not just a hero, I'm a superhero, super diva! It happens after midnight, I plan my strategy. Think of how to save the world, think of others, not just me. I will shine a spotlight on those who are in need. Hero, hero, superhero. It's gonna take a super diva that likes to overeat. You need a diva who, 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 you're holding out for a diva who is larger than life. She's gotta be strong and she's gotta be fast and she's gotta be challenged in height. Challenged in height. You need a diva in the through the wind and the chill and the rain. You can feel my power, I'm a super diva, I'm a great big super diva, big super diva, huge super diva, massive super diva. Wow, that was fun, fun to watch it again. And boy, at the time, they had the audience so with them, eating out of their hands. They've developed that whole uh, diva package over the years. And Nikki pulls that off so well. But if you know Nikki in real life, you know that is definitely not her character. She plays this diva that's stuck on herself. And in real life, Nikki is so humble and generous and giving. And so to pull that off is, is really fun. I love that they each had their own little solos in that package. Very entertaining. Well, that, that's an important part of packaging as well because they featured each of those quartet singers, not only singers, but their theatrical and characterization abilities. And the other thing about that package, the diva advice idea is very universal which is important packaging also that, that our audience, no matter what country they're from, understands what we're communicating. So yes. that, that was an excellent choice. All four of these ladies are very busy coaches, by the way. So they're, they have their hands full and I don't know how they find time because learning that set and everything flowed one song to the next to the next, that just takes a lot of work, a lot of time. Three of them live in the Seattle area and their baritone Anne is up in Canada. So, um, you know, they're sort of a distance quartet, I guess, but the other- International. Part, they're an international <laughs> quartet. And right now they haven't been able to meet because of the border closings and things. I just watched the technical part of that performance too. Um, it, just the pitch pipe, when they're taking their pitches, it is so subtle and it's so clever. You don't even notice the pitch pipe's been blown and somebody starts a solo. Um, that again takes really good timing and all of that stagecraft goes into just a fabulous score and a fabulous performance. And you know, when they did that, they were actually order of appearance, they were the last contestant, they were number 10. Oh, and they've told us how fun was that knowing that the house would be full 
And actually for the finals, our house is usually full. Nobody wants to miss those finals. It doesn't affect the judging to be early or late in the contest, but it is fun to know that you're performing to a full house. Well, I'm glad you said that because, because we are so well-trained judging-wise that it, the order of appearance does not impact what we do. But singing to a full house, as you said, is really great. And they said when Nikki, uh, when they came out and Nikki said, never fear, fear <laughs> deep is fear. Yeah. Then the audience just roared and they felt so relaxed through that acceptance immediately. So there's a lot to be said for feeling that audience rapport right out of the shoot as they did, which is so great. And their timing was impeccable because there was a lot of audience laughter and yet the stopwatch is running. And so there are penalties if you go over time and yet you don't want to stop the audience from laughing and enjoying it so much. So even that was handled so beautifully. Well, and I'm thinking they, they must have, I, I would guess, have rehearsed this for their courses or in front of somebody to get a sense of that applause and laughter because if you just do that in your living rooms, it's very hard to gauge what those the reactions are. And if they didn't do that, they're very exquisite at, at the timing of that right there live. But what a fantastic performance. And we definitely wanted all of you to see the full performance because of the timing and the humor and the singing. And it, they're all wonderful, but that was a really wonderful performance that we wanted to share. Yeah, listen to their uh, history a little bit. So the first time they competed at International was 2011. They got eighth place, but they won the Novice Award. And then 2012, they were fourth place. 2013, they were seventh place, but won Most Entertaining. 2014, they got a fifth place medal. 2015, they jumped up to the silver medal, second place, and got Most Entertaining. And then this year that you just saw was 2016, and they won and got most entertaining again. Well, amazing. They obviously had tenacity. Yes. They, they stuck with it, um, and we've seen performances of quartets that have done that, and it pays off. If you have the commitment and dedication, by all means, this is a tough contest. The Sweet Adelines is loaded with a lot of talent. We've seen it all day today. And that we're going to wind up today with, the Class Ring Quartet, and they sing a song that is so meaningful to them and to all of us, especially this year of this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And they close out with Climb Every Mountain. Ba bass is Haley, lead Heather, Barry, Mary, tenor, Michaela, and uh, take it away, girls. Over the past year, we've had a lot of time to reflect. When we first started this quartet, our biggest dream was to become Rising Star Champions. And now, we're starting to realize that our dreams are as big as we make them. We've had a lot of good times and a few challenges, but we've decided that we aren't gonna give up on our dreams. And our hope and prayer for all of you is that you don't give up on yours either. Stay on. 
What beautiful singing, what wonderful women they are, what talented singers they are. And you know, they shared with, some of us knew this was going on, but uh, while they were there performing that week and competing, Haley, their bass, was so sick. And what a trooper she was and is. I, I watch her during that performance and you never know that she was a very sick young woman that week. Wow. Well, I guess the show must go on and the professionals seem to pull it off. So that was, that was incredible. The, these girls actually got together in 2014 and they won the Rising Star Contest just a few months after that in that same year. And then they became queens only a few years later. Now they are 2019 international champions. And that song certainly means so much to all of us. Uh, it's hard to even explain at this time in our existence, right? Yeah, very emotional. And here's another case of a mother-daughter queenship that they share because the baritone Mary's mom is Michelle from Zing. And so there's another mother-daughter that are queens of harmony. And I guess we need to talk about a father-daughter a championship connection here because Michaela's dad is Mike Slamka, who is the lead of both Power Play and Crossroads. And something very emotional they did on stage was bring their husbands and, and uh, their family members on stage with them to do a song. They're all such talented singers and that just made it so emotional. Well, and it, it, it is. And to think that five babies have been introduced by these four women already, or some of them within that group, um, since they did this performance. So they're not only busy rehearsing, you know, following up on their champion responsibilities, they're creating a whole family of singers. <laughs> it was cute when they looked back on uh, the fact that we chose this particular performance, they said, come to think of it, that was the last international we did without children. Because <laughs> from that point on, uh, they were busy as moms as well as singers. And here's just a quick update what these wonderful women are up to right now. Mary, the baritone, is just about done with grad school. They're so proud of the work that she is doing. Michaela just had a little baby boy, Miles, and she's very busy with learning tracks and cornet club, and she's teaching kindergarten virtually, if you can imagine doing that. Um, Haley is a brand new mommy. She had the beautiful June Magnolia in 2020, and the quartet hasn't even met the baby yet. They are looking forward to that. Heather is pregnant again. She's due in November with Logan this time, but she already has at home Riley, who's three, and Peyton, who's one. So she's a busy lady, and all members of that quartet are busy, talented women. Oh, for sure. Oh, my goodness. What a day it's been. Oh, I just loved watching these performances again. And if you enjoyed it, like we sure hope you did, I just want to remind you that a week from tomorrow, that Saturday, October 24th, is the Cornet Club virtual show. And so you will get to hear a lot more of these wonderful championship performances. Join us for that. It's so exciting. I just want to throw a little bit of a shout out to Beth Smith um, for all of her help. You know, because she's helped us with so much information from the Keeping Score folks. And, and as much as all of our performers did submit things for us, we had additional background information from the Keeping Score people. So thank you, Beth, for helping us with that. We really appreciate it. Now might be a great time to click that donate button. I know my heart is very full from memories and also the desire to stay strong. And with that, we end the quartet showcase. But tomorrow, we're doing the same format with chorus performances from the past. We know you're going to love that. Well, we know that you don't want to miss it. So we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time, same place. The passing years will show, we'll keep our loving hearts in
What led me to compete at Rising Star started in high school. So there was an after school program, which is how I discovered Barbershop and Sweet Adelines. And I got to compete in my very first Young Women in Harmony Quartet. And then in college, Heather and Mary and Michaela reached out to me through the Sweet Adeline community and asked if I wanted to be in a Rising Star Quartet with them. So that actually connected us for the very first time and it started our journey together as a quartet. My favorite part about the Rising Star Contest is that it's really more of a celebration than a contest. As both a spectator and a competitor, experiencing just the love and fellowship shared by all those young quartets is incredible. They cheer each other on and offer each other a safe place to start their quartet journeys. Class Ring was able to attend Queens College in 2016 and 2018. And we had the opportunity to be coached and take classes by some of the greatest Queens in the organization. Queens College is very hands-on, which was perfect for us. Something special about the last Queens College that we attended was that the buzz was the guest quartet and clinicians for the weekend. We went to this college as the current second place international medalist, and they were our final push and motivation to go from second to first. Our 2019 champion quartet is Class Ring! Well, I'm still smiling and a bit breathless watching all those great performances. And there were so many of you we could have included, so please don't write to us. But what fun that was. And I just want to thank all those performers that we just watched for sharing their extraordinary talent with our organization through the years. Yay. Absolutely. Thank you.